Shove it, man! Hello, Shove It Squad, it's The Hawk. Today on the show, it's Ring of the Hawk Season 4, the show where we watch back a wrestler's short run with a company, and at the end we shove them a final grade to see if they can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. I'm really looking forward to today's video, as it's a wrestler who's being talked up as a future star. But the twist here is that it'll be his NWA run in 2019. Alright, it's Ricky Starks. When he takes your girl, she barks. I've never had a chance to watch enough of him to form my own opinion. He has been touted as being the new Brock and a future AEW world champion. Programs with the top stars. Also, rumours of him heading to the WWE suit. Is this guy truly the future of the industry or is he a dollar store rock? Let's find out and see why AEW signed him in the first place. Match 1, NWA Power, Ricky Starks vs Trevor Murdoch. The Comrade team wisely tell us that Starks is a little bit leaner than Murdoch. Yeah, thanks for that one, guys. Starks uses his speed and manages to hit an arm drag, but Murdoch responds with a hip toss straight away. They both miss moves as the crowd applaud. Murdoch steals Starks' taunt. That fires up Starks, who manages to throw a few punches before being crushed with a big boot. Murdoch keeps destroying him with a Russian leg sweep. He does miss his second rope leg drop and Starks quickly kicks his head off for a two count. Starks hits a net break now for another two. They're telling a story here that Murdoch hasn't actually wrestled full time in years and Murdoch can't keep up with the young Ricky Starks. Ricky hits a missile drop kick for another two. Murdoch manages to counter a tornado DET. Murdoch keeps smacking him in the head and Starks ducks a punch but instead he gets a little kick. It seems like Murdoch is closing in for the kill when Starks crucifixes him, and that's the three. Alright, a bit of a surprising debut win. Starks does get to talk and he praises Murdoch for taking the loss like a man. Ricky Starks outlines his goals in the NWA. He says he can win any title in the company. Men call him Absolute Ricky Starks and the ladies call him Stroke Daddy. Supposedly because he can't get any. He tells the interviewer that he can't look like Ricky Starks and ends on a nice little rap. The crowd reacted well to this, nice. They feel like they've created a future star out of the blue. A good debut win, the match was okay too, and a good promo, it's a B from the Hawk. Match 2, Ricky Starks vs Aaron Stevens. Stevens starts with a snap mitt, Starks encourages him to keep going and dodges his elbow drop. It's a fiery start as Starks pinballs him around the ring. Ricky Starks get a 2 off a drop kick. Stevens then takes a shortcut and kicks the rope out as he rains down with the punches and kicks. Stevens hits a Russian leg sweep and starts on a curtsy to the crowd, then he hits an elbow drop. The Aaron Stevens slap is non-effective and it fires up Starks. He gets a two off a swing blade. Starks connects with a bat body drop and does his own bow to the crowd. Ricky also tries a slap. Stevens dumps in his nappy of fear and gets rolled up for it. Nice storytelling and nice charisma, it's a C. Match 3, 2 out of 3 fools match, Ricky Starks vs Aaron Stevens. Stevens tries to jump in before the bell but misses and Starks rolls him up straight away. Starks continues getting undressed and ready for the match. He's calm and collected. The match restarts and Starks almost gets him rolled up again. Ricky Starks keeps going with an uppercut and a drop kick. He's all over him. Stevens then grabs an eyelash to slow Starks down. Stevens turns up the aggression. He nails a simple suplex for a two. They trade punches for a bit before Starks runs into the corner and hits him with a tornado DDT for just a two count. He can't hit his second rope drop kick. Steven starts curtsying with happiness, but he shouldn't do that as Stark's body scissors him into a pin and that's the three. Strong booking for Stark so far. All his interactions are fun and he seems so relaxed here. It's another C. Match four, Ricky Starks versus the question mark, the fan favorite. Question mark keeps chopping him in the head and hits a punch to the gut. The crowd are loving this guy. He misses his attack in the corner, which allows Starks to hit a jawbreaker and a drop kick. Mark gets overzealous and falls out of the ring. Starks can't connect with his dive and they brawl outside the ring. Aaron Stevens jumps Starks and the match is thrown out. Stevens holds him still as the question mark nails karate strikes. Colt Cabana then rescues him. Not much to say, it's a D. But we do set up a new match for later in the night. Match 5, tag match. Colt Cabana and Ricky Starks versus Aaron Stevens and question mark. The bell rings but Stevens is scared of Starks so instead question mark will start. Starks trips him up and drop kicks him. Colt Cabana gets the tag, who does well against Stevens. Starks gets the tag, but Stevens is still scared of him. He keeps hiding on the outside and eventually tags Question Mark. Starks has no answer for the karate onslaught. Question Mark hits a bat body drop and finally Aaron Stevens is happy to come in. He hits one chop and tags out. Stevens and Question Mark keep hitting karate chops and tagging out. Aaron Stevens is jealous of the fan support for Question Mark. Stevens moons the crowd for some reason. Starks wakes up and connects for Swing Blade and tags out. 
Starks isn't gone for long though and comes back with a big jumping flatliner for a two. He works with Colt Cabana for a bit as they keep hitting Stevens with asses to the face. Starks now looks for a DDT which is countered and question mark has the tag. Straight away Starks hits him with a Russian leg sweep. Starks then randomly tries to take his mask off which causes the match to break down. In the chaos question mark karate chops his throat and Aaron Stevens takes the glory with the pinfall victory. A fun comedy match which wasn't really about Starks, it's a C. Match 6, into the fire pay-per-view national heavyweight title match, triple threat. The challenger is Ricky Starks, he gets a very long entrance and the fans seem to love him. Classy touch is him kissing a little disabled girl on the hand, fair play. And also in this match is Aaron Stevens versus the champion Colt Cabana. <laughs> it turns out the girl in the front row is fine, she just doesn't want to be there, so they're messing with her. This just really seems to be about Starks and Stevens hating each other. Colt and Starks team up with strikes on Stevens. The double bionic elbow gets a good pop. Stevens' leg is caught and thrown at a confused Ricky Starks. Starks quickly drop kicks him away. Cabana almost rolls up a distracted Starks. Aaron Stevens hides behind a Christmas tree whilst the others chain wrestle. They go hold for hold for a while. The pace increases and Starks lands a shoulder tackle with happiness. He does hit a crossbody but is turned over for a two count. Stevens returns with the other two down, but they quickly stand up and he starts doing weird and wacky karate poses at him. They give him a double gut punch. Stevens hasn't landed a single move in this match. With Starks distracted, Cabana throws him out the ring, looking to take advantage, but he can't. Starks returns, but misses and gets a back body drop. It looks like it's over as Stevens hits a discus clothesline, but Starks can kick out. Now Stevens hits a Russian leg sweep with some wacky poses into an elbow drop. Aaron Stevens gets another two off suplex. Ricky Starks come close with a small package before getting his block knocked off. Stevens fights Cabana which allows Starks time to recover and he hits Stevens with a swing blade. Now Starks and Cabana work together to hit low atomic drops but it all looks a bit messy. They take Stevens out and now Cabana and Starks will fight again. Nice move as Starks drop kicks Cabana whilst also hitting a senton at the same time but it's just a two. Cabana manages to get the Billy Goat's curse submission on Starks but after a while Starks makes the ropes. Stevens has gone back to hiding again. Ricky Starks and Cabana exchange pins. I have no idea which way this match is going. More and more pins are exchanged. It's pretty good stuff. Starks manages to hit the big tornado DDT, but he's too exhausted to make the cover. Aaron Stevens is now falling asleep. Cabana hits the Superman pin, which doesn't work as question mark jabs him in the throat of interference. The camera misses a Stark spear as then Stevens scrambles into the ring to steal the pin and it's over. A nice match which blended comedy with solid wrestling. It's a B, very enjoyable. Match 7, Ricky Starks versus Eddie Kingston. Kingston attempts to keep Starks grounded, but he struggles as Starks hit a diving shoulder block and a diving crossbody. Kingston asks for more, which Starks obliges. His momentum is stopped when Kingston hit in a big time suplex for a two. Ricky Starks comes back eventually with a swing blade. He also hits the tornado DDT for another two. And he gets another two off a sunset flip, and then, wow. A move he calls Buster Keaton, and that is a scary finishing manoeuvre. Ricky Starks wins the match. Pretty short, but Ricky showed some new moves and the crowd really liked him. It's a B for this short squash match. Match 8, Ricky Starks vs Nick Aldis. Non-title match. Aldis is the first one to show off athleticism and he does a cocky pose on the ropes. Starks does some athleticism of his own into a dropkick which makes Aldis dump in anger. Starks comes close with a roll-up but his crossbody attempt is caught and Aldis presses him up and suplexes him. It's all Nick Aldis now as he hits brutal cross faces and Ricky's attempt to come back is stopped by a clothesline. Nick Aldis hits the sack of shit, the Scott All Special for a two. Starks fights out of a submission, hits the swing blade. Big spear in the corner from Starks but he can't hit the DDT. Aldis is unable to stop the missile drop kit though. Aldis dumps his nappy of fear again and hides on the outside. He isn't safe out there though as Starks flies out the ring just about onto him. Starks can't connect with a middle rope moonsault. Aldis tries a leg submission which is switched into a small package for a two. Nick Aldis is a persistent bugger though and he gets the cloverleaf on. The clock is ticking down though. Starks manages to withstand his submission finisher for an entire minute. So that's Aldis's finisher dead. The match ends in a time limit draw even though Aldis thinks he's won for some reason. Pretty nice spot for Starks, shame it wasn't longer, it's a C. Match 9, NWA Hard Times 2020, TV title tournament, first round. Matt Cross versus Ricky Starks. He looks like a young hyena here. Matt Cross somehow looks 60 years old and 20 years old at the same time. It looks like it's going badly for Starks as he marches around the ring trying to do something. He gets drop kicked through the ropes. Cross can't hit his dive back into the ring despite the athletics and Starks drops him on his face. 
He blows a kiss to the crowd and hits a backbreaker followed by a big kick, just a two. Cross slips out of his finisher attempt and throws some clotheslines. Matt Cross then connects with a handspring back elbow and a springboard crossbody for a two. It's all Matt Cross with a body scissors into a double stomp for another two. Ricky Starks desperately tries to fight back but Cross bounces off the ropes into a cutter. Cross can't finish him off with the dive and Starks quickly connects with the Buster Keaton for the three. Starks didn't really do that much here. It was a short but fun match though. It's a C. Match 10, NWA Hard Times 2020 TV title tournament semi-final. The veteran, Tim Storm, there's just something so likeable about this guy and he takes on our guy, Ricky Starks. They're pretty even until Tim Storm barely hits a spine buster. Storm also snap mirrors Starks and hits a running boot. For those of you who don't know, t- for those of you who don't know, Tim Storm was booked as quite a big deal in the NWA during the Nick Aldis era. Starks replies with a running drop kick, but he can't hit his dive. Storm capitalizes by crushing his back. Out of nowhere, Tim Storm hits the perfect storm, but doesn't cover, and nobody knows what's going on. I don't even know. Did he even mean to hit that at that point? Anyway, Starks almost rolls him up and then does a move a bit like a Styles Clash. Somehow that's just a two. Both guys are spinning around like ballerinas on acid on ice. Starks gives him a crucifix pin for the three. That was surprising. Strong booking for Starks in this run. Another fun short match. It's another C. Match 11, NWA Hard Times 2020 main event, TV title tournament final. Trevor Murdoch versus Ricky Starks. The opening stages is basically Murdoch picking him apart for ages. Starks' diving game just isn't working. He almost gets counted out. He does make it back though as Murdoch stands over him, slapping him like a drunken, abusive father. Brutal spot now of a stun gun where Ricky overshoots it and smashes his face on the floor on the outside. Murdoch is happy to take the count out, but once again, Starks makes it back to the ring. He shouldn't have bothered as Murdoch suplexes him out of his boots for a two. Starks gets decapitated on a clothesline. We've got a good match going here. They fight on the top rope with Starks desperately slapping Murdoch away. Starks slips out and powerbombs Murdoch, just the two. This crowd is coming unglued. Starks finishes reverse, but he flies back at Murdoch with a spear for a two. He picks him straight back up and hits his finisher, and that's the three. The commentary team have changed their minds on the finisher name, and it's now called The Stroke. So a wild slap nuts almost appears. Wow, great match. He pulled triple duty on this show, and he won a title. It can't be anything else than an A. He's made a believer out of the Hawk. There's something special about this kid. Starks is really popular with this crowd. I like that he comes across as a vanilla babyface, but always adds his own edge at the end of a promo. Match 12, TV title match. The challenger, Zicky Dice, who looks like a young DDP versus the champion, Ricky Starks. Starks takes a big knee to the nutsack, but he doesn't have one and he's fine. He nails a bunch of arm drags, but misses his dropkick. Dice celebrates too soon and now Starks can hit his dropkick. Starks stops an attempt to dive with a punch to the gut. Nice move from Dice now as he bear hugs Starks, shuts him into the corner and then throws him back overhead of a suplex. Starks fights back of a swing blade. He also hits the middleweight dropkick for a two. Dice starts trying to hump Starks' head. Starks hates being humped and drops his nutsack on his knee. Ricky Starks wins with the stroke. This was fine, but felt a bit boring compared to the last couple of matches. This a D. Match 13, TV title match, Matt Cross versus Ricky Starks, the champ. Bit of a slow start to this one. That is until Cross slips out of a monkey flip and hits the backbreaker. He also hits a handspring back elbow for a two. He gets yet another two on a pump kick. They then have a seesaw suplex trade off with Starks eventually sending him up for one. He hits the Tornado DDT for a two. As the time limit comes to the last few seconds, Cross then springs off the ropes into a cutter. The time limit officially expired and it's down as a draw. Matt Cross controlled most of this match and Starks never looked like winning it. It's a D. Match 14, triple threat non-title match. Matt Cross vs Ziggy Dice vs Ricky Starks. Ziggy tells everyone to keep away from his fanny pack. You know what? Why is it called a fanny pack when it goes around your waist? In England, they call it a bum bag. You don't shove the bag up your ass, do you? Anyway, Starks and Dice brawl on the outside. Cross decides to take them both out with a tope. Back in the ring, Ricky Starks gets a two off a roll up. Dice returns and gets a couple of close pinning attempts. He starts humping the air. Cross and Starks take him out of a back body drop. Matt Cross slips out of the stroke and hits the cross cutter. Matt Cross then flies off the top with a shooting star press. Ziggy Dice gets up and launches him out the ring and covers Ricky Starks. Rare loss for our guy. Starks did basically nothing in there and maybe seemed a bit overshadowed by the antics of the crazy Ziggy Dice. It's another D. Match 15, final match, TV title match, the challenger Ziggy Dice versus Ricky Starks. They have a push-up competition, so I guess that's entertaining. 
Starks is showing more aggression here than previous smashes. Ziggy Dice dumps in his bum bag and hides on the outside with fear. He cuts Starks across the ropes and throws him into the steps. He keeps going, stretching Starks across the ring pole and kicks him into the pole for just a two. We do get a small botch now as Dice falls over on a DDT reversal. Starks is annoyed about that and picks him up and smashes him with a falcon arrow for a two. This Dice is obsessed with grinding on Starks. He hits his finisher, which he apparently calls the snake rattle and roll. Ziggy Dice appears to have shat his knickers. Starks gets his foot on the rope from the pin. Ricky Starks attempts his finisher, but it's reversed into a pin with Dice sitting on his face. Not pleasant. The smell of diarrhea makes Starks pass out and that's the free. Game over. Not incredible, it's a D. So his contract with the NWA expired and just a few short months later, Starks would appear on Dynamite answering a Cody Rhodes Open challenge. And then he would become one of Taz's many sons. You know what, I think I understand more of what this guy is about now and what he has to offer. He works best when booked as a fun-loving underdog babyface. Some of his later matches were a bit boring when he seemed to tone down his personality or perhaps others overshadowed him. His ring stuff was pretty solid, nice range of moves and the crowd really liked him. He was also one of the few young guys that NWA seemed to be building up towards the main event so that was nice to see. In the NWA, the TV title holder gets a world title shot after they've defended the TV title seven times so potentially they had ideas of moving Starks onto the main event. All that's left to do is shove Starks a final grade for Ring of the Hawk Season 4. I enjoyed this more than I expected. I think I might be a fan of Starks now. He's just a fun character. It's a shame it ended before it got to the payoff. And that's all this run was missing, a few more high profile matches. So the final grade is a C. It would have been a B, but not if your finisher is the stroke. And if you don't agree with that, I'll show your girl a real bloke.